Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day three puzzle using Ivy again. I really didn't expect Ivy to last this long, but somehow it seems appropriate. So I have the sample and input ready in data.ivy as you can see, and we've read it into Ivy. And in this puzzle, the input is given in binary, but we've converted it into integers while reading, but we still need to work on the individual bits. So let's split the input into a matrix of bits. Ivy provides an encode operator for base conversion. For example, We've split one, two, three into decimal. It might seem weird to have to say 10 that many times, but it gives us control over how many digits we get. As a reminder, five row 10 is five tens, and we can use that to get five decimal digits. As an aside, we can vary the base if we want, and zero means to just take all the remaining digits. So we could break 93,784 down into Days, 24 hours, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. And that's one day, two hours, three minutes, and four seconds. And of course, we can reverse the calculation. So let's define some helpers for binary conversions. With two arguments, n binary x will turn x into n bits. And as a unary operator, binary will turn the bits back into a real value. Here we go. So we can convert the input into a binary matrix. And you'll note that the bits are transposed from the ones in the web page, but they're more convenient for us that way because the first bit is just B of one. Now, as a reminder, row as a unary operator tells us the dimensions of a vector or a matrix. So row of B of one tells us that there are 12 bits in that row. Now, the puzzle asks us to make a new binary number that uses the majority bit from each bit position, the most common bit. And so we can find that by adding all the bits together and then checking whether the total is at least half of the number of bits. So let's make that majority calculation itself an operator. Okay, and then there we still have the majority. And the puzzle's gamma value is then the binary interpretation of that majority. That's right. And the epsilon value is the binary interpretation of the inverted bits. And that's right. And so the puzzle asks us to multiply those two together. And that is the correct answer. So now let's try the big input, which I know has 12 bit numbers. And we'll see. And that's it. All right. So in part two, we're supposed to interpret this uh, input a little bit differently. We're going to filter out numbers that we don't want until we get down to a single number. And the way we filter, we're going to filter one bit at a time. Uh, and just as a reminder, the sample looks like this, and we can pull out the high bit with that. And so suppose we want to filter out just the numbers that have the high bit set to one. We can, Ivy provides a, an operator for that called cell for select. And so we can select the numbers where B of one is one, and that is the larger numbers because they have the 16 bit set. And we'd like to use this really not on the original inputs, but on our grid. And that doesn't work for two reasons. The first is that cell refuses to work on matrices, and that's arguably an oversight in Ivy. And so we can work around that fairly easily by implementing this as a, a index into a, the, the vector. And so iota of five is the numbers from one to five. And so iota of row of B of one is the indexes into B of one. And then we can select from that and use those as the indices. Those are the indices we want. And so where we before we said B of one cell sample, we can also say um, sample of this list should be the same, and it is. So now we can say, well, maybe we wanna use that list again here. And that doesn't work because indexing is pulling out rows and we wanna pull out the columns. So to pull out the columns, we need to transpose B and then index it 
and then untranspose it. And that does what we want. Now all the, the columns have the first bit one. So let's write a bit select operator that puts that together. Transpose of transpose of B of I cell iota row I. And so now we can say, give me um, B of one selecting B. And that's the same ones. And of course, we can check that those are the right bits another way by looking at the binary representation of what we would have pulled out of in the sample. And sure enough, that's the same. Now, here we've been using it as our example, pulling out the numbers of the leading one bit. But what we're supposed to do is take the numbers of the leading majority bit. So let's do that instead. So starting with B, uh, in this case, the majority bit is one, so we should get the same answer. Remember, underscore means the previous result. And so that filtered on the first bit to pull out the majority first bit. And then we'll do the same for the second bit. And then we'll do the same for the third bit. And then we'll do the same for the fourth bit. And then we'll do the same for the fifth bit. And now we're down to a single number, and notice that our matrix degenerated into a vector because there was only one column left. So that's how we'll know that we need to stop. Uh, and so we have to figure out how we're going to tell the difference between a matrix and a vector, because we don't want to interpret that as five different one-bit binary numbers. And so let's just save that for a second. We can tell the, the size of a, a matrix or a vector by using row. So the original grid is a 5 by 12 matrix whereas this last value is just a five length vector. And so we can use row to tell those apart, but we need some sort of test we can do on them. And we can apply row twice. The length of the five 12 is two, and the length of just the five turns out to be zero in IV. And so we can use that value to distinguish. Do we still have a matrix or are we looking at a vector? So let's write a function that will count the number of bits we're still holding on to, or the number of binary values we're still holding on to. If row row of D is bigger than one, then we'll just use the dimension from row. And otherwise, we'll say we have one value left. And so B count of B says there are five. That's not right. B count of last says there are that many. Hmm. I guess we should fix that. How's that? B count of B. There we go. All right. So um, now that we can count them, we can start talking about writing the function to do the actual filtering. And remember before, what we were doing was, was this expression. Um, but, you know, underscores and sets the right thing right now. But now we remember what it was. So we're going to say that we're going to write a function called oxygen, because they call this the oxygen generator rating. And it's going to say, starting at bit n, do the filtering on b. And so to start with, if there's nothing, if there's only one thing left in B, then we're done. And otherwise, we're going to do the majority calculation and selection. And then we're going to pass that recursively in a tail call to oxygen processing the next bit. So that should get us one oxygen B. Index out of range shape five. Well, that's unfortunate. Hmm, I wonder what I did. Um, oh, that index is wrong. Let's try that again. One oxygen B, that's better. And then as a helper, we'll define that oxygen with a, as a unary operator interprets the overall bit pattern as binary, just like we did before. And we have 23, that is correct. Now CO2, the CO2 scrubber rating, is the same as the oxygen rating, except that we're using the non-majority bit. So let's define that. All right, CO2 of B is 10, that's the right answer. So now we're finally ready to just do the whole puzzle. Oxygen CO2, oxygen B times CO2B. 
So let me say puzzle of five sample input. Puzzle B. Puzzle two B. There we go. Oh, five sample input was wrong. That was the problem. It's puzzle two of five binary sample. And then we'll puzzle two of five binary input. Well, 12 binary input. And there we go. And sure enough, that's the answer. And we got our stars. All right, have a nice day.